Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, here's our demo for the day. So we're gonna make a biopolymer out of tapioca starch. Uh, we're going to make a composite by adding that biopolymer to some tissues. Um, now, I know many of you are like, well, I don't have tapioca starch, I don't know what to do. You can use any starch, cornstarch, ooh, very fluffy, cornstarch, potato starch. Um, those are probably the, the most likely ones you would be to have. Cornstarch is pretty common. People use it for making, uh, for adding to like uh, breading on things or for thickening sauces. Um, cornstarch is very easily available and it will work totally fine as a perfect replacement for tapioca starch. I just happen to have this. Um, so it doesn't, literally doesn't matter. Um, you could use flour also, but that will not behave quite the same way because it has protein in it also. It has gluten um, in, the, in the starch, or in, mixed in with the starch. So there's wheat starch and wheat gluten, and the gluten is a protein which won't interact with the water and vinegar in the same way that, uh, as what we're gonna do here. You'll also need some white vinegar, Apple cider vinegar will work also. Uh, balsamic vinegar probably would work, but it will make the whole thing smell weird and be sugary and like, there's a bunch of other stuff in there. Uh, apple cider vinegar or white vinegar are about as close. Rice vinegar would also work if you have rice vinegar, but just something that is an acid. So this is acetic acid. Um, we need to be able to acidulate this starch. So that's gonna help it to, um, to, to, to hydrolyze and break down a little bit in the way that we need it to. Um, so what we're going to be doing with this acid is we're going to be slightly attacking the starch. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, you're going to need some water. I just have this in a jar for you all. And then I'm going to add a little oil. Um, you can also add glycerol or glycerin. Um, glycerin is a polyol that is a, um, it's basically a bunch of OH, uh, OHs that bond to waters. So it's a humectant, it, it like hydrates things. Um, if you had like a bunch of aloe vera laying around <laughs> or if you had another plant gum, you could try putting lotion in this. That might work actually, and it might be worth uh, trying, but if you had some, some cheapo lotion, you might try adding a little, just a little bit of that. And the reason for that, and we'll explain it in a second, but basically, I don't know if you can see this, I'm just gonna put it up on the, the video. Um, so here's cassava, that's the plant that this tapioca starch comes from. If you got potatoes, it comes from the potatoes. But basically, starches are these long chain molecules that plants use to store energy in their, uh, for, for next season, right? And so they can put molecules together and then they can break those molecules into sugar and metabolize the sugar uh, later on. And the starch is pretty, because it's a long chain, it's harder for bacteria to digest most bacteria aren't able to just directly digest starch and so it doesn't uh, it doesn't get stolen from them by soil bacteria right so starch is a trick that the plants use to store energy in a way that other animals can't access and interestingly um, uh, more complex animals like mammals um, you know multi-cell animals often are able to eat starch. And the way that we do that is we attack the starch with acid in our stomachs. Um, it's harder to break down with, uh, with, with, um, with enzymes, but you can attack it with, with acids and then that will like degrade these side chains and you end up releasing sugars and then the whole thing can, can be more easily uh, metabolized by you. So we're gonna use this acid to slightly break down that starch. We're also, going to um, reinforce. So this is gonna be a pretty brittle material when it's dry. We're gonna reinforce it with some, um, I'm just using literally like Kleenex. You could use toilet paper. If you had some um, rice paper or, and by rice paper, it's often called rice paper, it's not actually made with rice. It's, um, it's like koji, koji paper is, uh, koji? Kojo, Kojo. I can't remember. I have to look it up. 
but it's a it's a mulberry fiber paper so it's it is um, the thin fine paper that is often used for shoji screens um, kozu kozo 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 there you go kozo so kozo paper is used for these shoji screens and I'm not really sure why it's called rice paper actually um, it's just a total misnomer there you go Westerners um, in any case this this paper has very long fibers but it has really open structure so it's ideal for using for a composite um, fiber layer and so um, I know it's at the U bookstore it may be other places I don't know if the U bookstore is open right now but if you if you do want to make if you want to kind of go the extra mile and make a, a nicer biopolymer version of this um, then that's a way to do it okay so let's get started first we're gonna put in one tablespoon of this starch whatever starch you've got okay now um, these you don't even have to use tablespoons you can just eyeball it none of these are um, are chemical reactions really this is just this is just gonna end up making a, a mixture and there will be some chemical action of the vinegar on the starch, but it's not a, like a stoichiometric reaction where we need to have precise parts of, like in the chemistry class, right? Where you really need to measure out molar weights or something like that. We just need to be rough. So I'm gonna put about four tablespoons of water in. So that's like four to, four to one, if you're keeping, keeping track. You know what? I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna do four. Let's see. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do four. And then I'm gonna put one vinegar in, and that might actually end up being a little too much, so we'll see. There we go. So there's one vinegar. We might have to add a little more starch later on. We're gonna wait to add the, um, we're gonna wait to add the oil. Okay. So I'm gonna get these out of the way. Um, so now, let's look at um, the way that this is going to heat up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on like medium heat, okay? And I'm going to stir it all up as, as I'm talking to you. Um, you really want to make sure um, that you get this stirred. And in fact, it's probably better to kind of whisk it dry. A tapioca starch is pretty nice because it's got amylose and amylopectin, and because of the amylopectin, it um, doesn't clump quite as much. It's a much bigger starch, so it doesn't it doesn't stick together quite the same way that cornstarch does. If you're doing this with cornstarch, you'll notice it's goopy. So you can start to see, look at that, there's starting to be chunks in there. And what's happening is So what's happening is the water and the starch are mixing together. So see how this is like a goop now? Now this starch is hydrolyzed. So what's happened is there are all of these OHs and Hs, side chains. And as this heats up and becomes kind of active, the water can really um, get involved with, it, it can kind of go and attach itself to those side chains and be adsorbed onto those side chains. And because it's now sort of humidified or it's, it's, hyd it's hydrated, the starch, we see that the starch is this like, is this goopy goop, goopy gloop of, of starch. Now I'm gonna try to mix in some of this oil and I'm gonna put in a, hmm, maybe a half tablespoon. So if you're keeping track of, and this is just like, uh, corn oil or olive oil, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to try to mix this in. This might not mix in. It is not mixing in. And so the reason this is not mixing in is because of the, um, oh, that's going to make this really gross to try to interact with. <laughs> um, the reason it's not mixing in is because there's so much water in this thing. This is why using lotion or something else would be a much better, a preferred method. Um, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to spread this out. Why not? So I'm going to move the cooktop here for a second. Oh boy. And now, 
I've got my starch. I've got a um, silicone pat. You could use. Uh, let's see. Um, you could use a. I'm just gonna put a piece of cardboard so that it um, can be stiff. Um, so you could use regular uh, tin foil. You could use wax paper. Um, you could use anything you got, basically. And so I'm gonna spoon some of this goop on there and kind of, ooh, that is just marvelous. Um, and I'm gonna try to squeegee it. You can see what I'm, do you see what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to squeegee it across the tissue without totally breaking the tissue. And I'm actually gonna put it on the back side and then I'll put some on both sides. So kind of squeegee it through the tissue. Does that make sense to people? Take a look. So here's the, here's the thing being squeegeed. Okay, and I need it to be this silicone so that it's not gonna stick because if it sticks too badly to the silicone, then it's really gonna be difficult to, to separate. Um, I'm gonna make a, a separate batch of this stuff where I'm gonna put it, you can see it's very well wetted on the paper, this tissue paper. Um, so I'm gonna make a, another area of this that I spread out that's just the straight biopolymer. So you can see the difference between these, the biopolymer and the non-biopolymer, or I'm sorry, the, the composite and the non-composite biopolymer. So and then I'll, this is really jankety. If you were making a, a skateboard or something, you would want to do this more carefully than I have done. But that's okay. All right, this is looking great. Sweet. Spread that out. Just be, oh, look at that, man. It's like a Julie Child or something. Okay. Spread this out. It's looking so good. All right, that's good. And then we'll spread this piece out just so that we've got a comparison piece. Now I'm gonna dry this in a, um, in a convection oven. Um, so I'll, I'll do this and then I'll, I'll record a little follow up for y'all to show you what this looks like. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs> um, that's pretty goopy. Okay, I'll be back. All right, everybody, <clears throat> so we're back. And it looks like it maybe worked, we'll see. Um, we've got two different samples. We've got a biopolymer that is pretty, I don't know, pretty brittle. Okay, but it's clear, it's kind of, it's kind of cool, but this is basically just uh, starch that has all been tangled together. So there's no way for this to move because we didn't put any glycerol in there to make it able to slide against itself. Um, and it's not a very strong polymer because as you can see, we've just got this one oxygen bonding between the different bits. And so then because this amylopectin is in there and it branches, um, it, it really is, difficult to, to make it do, um, I don't know, to make it do a good job of, of flexing. None of these, uh, each of these is a, is a ring molecule and then it's bonded by this O and those rings don't have a lot of stretch to them. So it's not like the more wiggly molecules that we see with these um, kind of carbon backbones that are, that are more wiggly. On the other hand, this material is pretty cool. It's maintained some of its flexibility and we can cut it, just like, like paper, and it's pretty stiff. It's like surprisingly durable. You can see, I can tear it. I mean, it's, it's, it's tissue paper, right? But if I used a stronger paper, um, this, this is an actual material now. And you know, a, um, a tissue is not very strong either. So a tissue is very soft. This one is very brittle. But when you put them together, you can end up with something that is, is actually pretty durable 
is, is actually pretty um, useful. Now this is also water soluble still, which is a bummer. So this is a polymer that we'd have to modify in order to make it non-water soluble. But still pretty cool, still a neat, I don't know, a neat option if you, uh, if you want to experiment. Uh, so go try it out. It's stuff you've got around your house. It takes, this was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, go, take a, go take a test and check on, on uh, Canvas to see what the write-up looks like because I'd like you to, to publish some of your findings um, to see what you get. All right? I will see you on Monday.